In some places in North America, air conditioning is now seen as a necessity. In emerging markets, where it can be hot and humid all year, air conditioning is rapidly becoming a must-have, putting a real strain on power grids. Enter Adventix Systems, an air conditioning system that uses 30 to 50 percent less energy. Hannah Grenade is president of U.S. operations for Advantix Systems. Great to have you here. Thanks so much. How does it do it? What's different about Advantix than the classic? Because my understanding is that the classic air conditioning system hasn't changed that much in the last sort of 20, 30 years. So what are you doing differently? That's right. The classic air conditioning system really has seen very little innovation over the last 20 or 30 years. What our system does that's different is it capitalizes on the second function of air conditioning. What most people don't realize is that air conditioning actually does two things. It both drops the temperature of the air and it actually dehumidifies the air. And over the years, that second challenge has become much more difficult for a conventional air conditioner to be able to do. Our system is much more effective at doing that. And it basically does that by putting a salt solution together with a regular air conditioning system. The salt absorbs the humidity out of the air. Okay, so can that work on a large scale? Because the majority of power used is actually for the giant chillers that sit on top of 70-story buildings. That's where huge amounts of power is used. Is it efficient for the operator, for the actual buyer of that equipment? Is it significantly more expensive? In other words, what are the returns? I'm interested in it from the investment point of view of real estate holdings. One of the best things about our system, which currently focuses on just the commercial and industrial market, so the larger end of the market, is that it's economic today without government subsidies. So if you were a business owner considering making the investment, we're often competitively priced upfront and we still offer 30 to 50% energy savings throughout the life of the system. In so, cases where we're adding on equipment, we can be up to a two or three year payback. So still a very economic investment. What kind of response are you having? Because uh, it seems as though just about any, any building or even homeowner with air conditioning is your customer, is your, your market. Is, have you had a very strong reception? We've had tremendous reception since we entered the U.S. market. Uh, we were able to grow the, the presence in the U.S. by over tenfold for our installed base, and we more than doubled the global business last year. What I've noticed when I talk to actual managers of large resale or retail assets that are real estate, and because I was involved once in a storage business, and I tried to get our operators to try a new technology in lighting. And what, what the manager of the building said to me is, let me talk to somebody who, who's using it first, and they've had it for at least a year. Do you run into that problem trying to sell this system to people all the time? That is by far the toughest problem in this segment. Having risk-averse consultant engineers, risk-averse buyers, who just want their air conditioning to work. The worst time for it to stop working is, of course, when it's very hot and humid. And so the biggest challenge for us is being able to put reference sites out in the market and then bringing customers to go see those operations so they can feel that the air is more comfortable, cooler and drier and cleaner. Because there are swaths of the globe that are still developing and they're in places where air conditioning is going to make the difference between you know, a, st a strong kind of industrial base and not, uh, is that not the better focus rather than America where there is this kind of entrenched infrastructure already? It's an interesting quandary for us as a business. We do have fairly substantial global operations because, as you said, industry is growing much more abroad than it is today in the U.S. or really in the Americas. The, the benefit for us of being abroad is also that it's a much more humid climate. And so we do have a substantial operation in Mumbai, and we just launched our business in Shanghai this year. Now, if this really takes off, is your technology proprietary? Is your patent protectable? Or is someone going to knock you off with a slightly different system using this salt-based idea? Fortunately for us, we have nearly 100 patents. This space is very complex to engineer, and we have the benefit of a long history of founders who have worked on developing our IP position over many years. This is currently commercial only, right? You have not not yet developed a, a residential scaled version of it? That's right. We're just focused on commercial and industrial facilities. Is so there such a residential factories. possibility down the road for you? Absolutely. There's no reason our technology couldn't expand into that space. It's just not our focus right now. What do you think will happen? Are you going to play it out to become a huge player in this space or sell this as an IP play to one of the larger, much more uh, established players? Because distribution must be hell for you. <laughs> uh, distribution is definitely one of our challenges. We go direct to market and we work through partners as well. Um, but our commitment on the management team is to try to build this business into a tremendous global player because we want to have a lot of impact on the energy efficiency problem. Are you continuing to innovate? Uh, I'm still kind of amazing that so little innovation has gone on in such an important kind of piece of equipment on, on offices. Uh, are you, will that you continue to improve your system? 
Absolutely. When you think about the benefits of having drier air and not just cooler air, there are so many other applications for liquid desiccant technology. And so we're taking our portfolio of knowledge and our experts and we're developing that into many other sectors. A country like Switzerland, where people are installing uh, air conditioners all over the place because the climate's actually getting warmer there. I, I know this because uh, you know, an asset I have there has just gone to thermal conversion at a huge cost because the government has put tremendous pressure on businesses not to use more electricity. Mm -hmm. Is yours an electrical based solution? Can you use a thermal part to your solution? Or are you stuck in burning coal to make electricity to cool air? Our most popular product line is a simple plug and play electrical unit. But we do have product lines that are able to integrate renewable sources. Uh, so for example, we're able to take waste heat from industrial facilities that are generating all of that heat already through their equipment. We're also able to integrate solar thermal resources, which is a much less expensive version of solar, basically the hot water heaters that you see in a lot of the developing world, and use that to regenerate our desiccant and create the cooling effect out of that. All right, we've got to leave it there, Hannah. It's fascinating. We appreciate you joining us. Thanks very much. Hannah Grenade, Director of U.S. Operations for Advantix Systems. Coming up after the break...